Well, that was a little bit of fun. Um, I, I, you know, you have an idea and it could fall flat, you know, if nobody shows up. But man, the Hawks fans showed up today. 55,000 breaking the record. Um, getting to play outside into Kinnick, it was like a dream. It really was. It was just fabulous. And, you know, that's all the exterior stuff, right? Um, you know, I thought we had some good basketball too in there. Some really beautiful passes, some great assists. I mean, Caitlin has a triple double. I think Addie O'Grady has 14 rebounds in 19 minutes. And she did a really good job on the boards for us. And so I thought Hannah Stolke showed her improvement. Molly Davis showed her improvement, her improvement. Um, but I, I, the most important thing for me to do is say thank you to every single person that came to this game today. Um, they are a part of history and I, I can't thank them enough. The wave for us to be able to do the wave at the Children's Hospital, it was incredible. Um, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm really speechless about that. Um, the money that we raised goes to the Children's Hospital, a quarter of a million dollars today. Um, I, I can't thank my administration enough. Uh, when I went to Beth, at, you know, a week after the Final Four last year, and I said, I have this idea. Most people, a lot of administrators I know would say, you're crazy and think of every reason why not to do it. And instead, she thought of every reason she should do it. And to me, um, that is, uh, that's pretty special. So I'm, I'm thankful for our administration, uh, our facilities crew, how hard they worked, our ticketing people, how hard they worked, our marketing people. I mean, they all put in added, this was supposed to be a day off, right? The game, football game was yesterday, this was supposed to be a day off for them and they worked their tails off to make this happen. So I'm so thankful for them. Um, also for DePaul coming in. You know, it, it's not easy for DePaul to come in and play in front of 55,000 people in, in a football stadium. And I knew Doug Bruno was the right guy to do this. He's been around for a long time and he's all about promoting women's basketball. And that's what this event was today, was not only to get better uh, for our team, but to showcase this great sport that we have in women's basketball. Coach, what would uh, Christine Graham thought of this? Oh, I, you know how many times I've thought of that last year during our final four run, how happy she would have been, how pleased she would have been, uh, but today, um, would have been really special, I think. I, you know, I keep a picture of Dr. Grant and myself on my desk because I want to carry on her, her tradition. I want to carry on her legacy uh, in every way that I can. Um, and certainly, you know, this is one of them. What you, had, looked like you had a hard time losing the court there at the end. Could you just stay out there for about the next three hours soaking in every moment of this one? I, I think I could have. Um, and, you know, great weather, right? You know, it's been raining all week and then here we have great weather today. Um, you know, it was just, again, I'm so thankful. It was special. So glad that I could be a part of this journey. Is this Coach, something you want to make a regular um, occurrence? I haven't even thought about that yet. <laughs> I really haven't. Um, so we'll, we'll see. And why, why Doug? Why, why DePaul? Because Doug's been around our game for so long. And he's always willing to do anything to improve the game. Um, he's always been that way. And so I knew when I would call him and ask him, it took one phone call and he agreed to it. So, what did you think when you first walked out? Oh, saw it? yeah, it was, uh, even when I walked out, it was amazing. And also when I was sitting on um, timeouts and I could sit down and see the south end zone, right? <laughs> the north end zone is one thing, but when I'm sitting and talking to my players, I can see the south end zone. I mean, those people can't even see the court. You know, they're watching on the jumbotron, but they just want to be a part of it. And that just makes our players feel so special. There's Mark? one moment that the team, and it seemed like everybody in the stadium was waiting for, and when it happened, I saw the look on your face, but I think you probably were too. Second quarter, when Caitlin finally hit that first three. I mean, how much fun is that, right? You're playing outside. You know, there was a few little air balls in there. Free throws weren't as good. Our, our three-point percentage wasn't as good as normal. I, I really don't care. I really don't care about that. That's just such a minor part of this to me. Um, but, you know... She's such an electrifying player. And it's just, what can she not do? I mean, the assist she has, she has a triple-double outside uh, in a football stadium. I mean, she's a special player. What did the kids say about, about everything at like halftime when they experienced that? Um, you know, at halftime, we really didn't talk about anything about, uh, we just kind of focused on the game and tried to use it as a normal situation. I just, uh, you know, before the game, I just talked to them about being a historic day for us. Um, how we were playing for more than just ourselves. We're playing for the university. We're playing for the children's hospital. We're playing for Christy, our, our kid captain, who is just the most unbelievable kid. Um, 
And so, uh, yeah, it, we just talked about playing for everybody else and, and not for ourselves. In there seemed opinion, to be a lot of pride for, for go ahead, Chad. In your opinion, what drew so many people here today? Well, I mean, Caitlin sells a lot of tickets. There's no <laughs> doubt about that, right? I mean, she's just such a fun player to watch. But I also think it was, they want to be a part of history. And Hawk fans are special. And, you know, they you, you set a goal for Hawk fans and they're going to come through for you. And so that's, um, I think it was just that everybody just wanted to be a part of something special, see something they'd never seen before, mm -hmm. uh, and have the first opportunity to see this team play this year. There seemed to be a lot of pride in, in both your former players who were here watching you, watching the program at this level, and also your fans, your, especially your longtime fans that have been coming for years, and the, just the way they were beaming about this event. What does that mean to you just to see the connection that you, you know, the, the foundation here? Yeah, you know, we had Megan Gustafson here, uh, Kathleen Doyle was here, both players that were drafted and are, you know, still playing professional basketball. And, um, it, you know, they're in the locker room with us right now. And it just, it, it's so fun to have your players come back, right? And, and they want to be a part of your program. They want to come back. They know that they're welcome all the time. And, you know, they just want to be associated with that. There's a lot of kids that leave college and they never look back in the rearview mirror. And we don't want our players to feel that way. Um, so, you know, you got Tanai on the bench now. I got Tiffany Reedy doing radio. Um, it's just, it, it really is a family here. I, and I know everybody says that, but it's, it's so true. Lisa, back in April, what motivated you to lobby for this to become a reality? Well, you know, when I came home, our, we had that um, celebration on that Friday night to celebrate our team, and there was 9,000 people came out for that. I mean, they're not even coming out for a game. They're coming out just to see the team and to celebrate the success. So I thought, well, you know, what could we do? We'd sold out Carver already. You know, what were the possibilities? And, you know, obviously wrestling did it here five years ago, and it was a, hot, it was a great success. So why not? Why not try it? Lisa, I think in the start of the fourth quarter, there was an IOWA chant. That probably lasted for the better part of 10 minutes. I know you were, it probably wasn't the prettiest stretch of basketball, but how did, did you take a moment to kind of embrace that? And just what did that kind of revelation you think back to when you started your coaching career to go from, you know, the crowds you were, you know, you know, playing coaching in front of you know, 55,000 yeah. people doing an IOWA chant for 10 minutes yeah. outside and well, scrimmage yeah, in when October. When I first started, I probably played in front of 55 people, and now we're playing in front of 55,000. So we have come a ways. Um, but yeah, that chant went on forever, and I could not communicate with our team during it, but I loved it. <laughs> it was so much fun. I think I lost a little focus. I think the team lost a little focus during that time, but go for it. Lisa, when uh, you obviously like to quote Billie Jean King to your career as pressure being a privilege, when you look at the trajectory of what she was fighting for 50 years mm. ago to what you all were able to accomplish today, what does that mean for you in terms of not just the growth of women's basketball, but women's sports in general? Yeah, I mean, look what Nebraska did in volleyball. I mean, they had 92,000 at their game. That's incredible. So women's sports is at a, at a different level right now. And I think we're seeing the effects of the gender or the Title IX babies now are moms and grandmas. And they understand the value of sport. And they want their kids to embrace that and to celebrate it. But not only the little girls, the little boys too. And so little boys are growing up learning about how good, um, you know, women's athletics is. And so, yeah, you know, Billie Jean King is definitely one of, I, I mean, I sat there and watched the Battle of Sexes in my living room. I can tell you exactly where I was. Um, watching that, and uh, Billie Jean King was obviously at our Final Four last year. Um, so yeah, pressure is a privilege, but we're going to try to enjoy it every single day. This is a state with, I mean, with a rich girls' basketball heritage. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What does this game mean for all of that? You think? Yeah, we've had basketball here since 1920s in this yeah. state, and Jan's grandma was in the Hall of Fame. I mean, this is it is deeply rooted in this state. So it's just perfectly. I that it was here, that this event happened in the state of Iowa. <clears throat> Would you like to see this yeah. happen yearly? You I, said you you know, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if you can pull it off year after year with the same kind of enthusiasm as it happened one time. So I think that's something to think about. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Your first year coaching, what would that and Lisa think and say about today? <laughs> oh my goodness, that is a great question. Um, I don't think I could have ever dreamt this. I mean, it's unfathomable, you know, at that point. Uh, truly, we were probably playing in front of 55 people at some times. Um, you know, basketball's basketball, and I think 
that you know we tried to play with as much joy then as we do today. You mentioned several people, Hannah Stolke, Addison O'Grady, and mm -hmm. uh, Molly Davis. Three players are kind of in maybe different roles. Molly Davis in her second year in the big time now. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Hannah and Addie are going to be new stars. Just what did you think of them today? Oh, I, I, I've been, I mean, I think Molly Davis has looked great all summer long. She's just playing at a different level. Um, her confidence is there. I think last year she deferred to the people that have been here for a little bit. Uh, she's not deferring anymore, and she's owning it. Um, she's, I think, playing so well, and she's so smart. People don't realize how savvy she is. Um, and she just does little tricky, tricky things that you just, you know, people don't do. Um, Hannah Stalky, um, you know, I, I don't judge her on her free throws because nobody, I mean, Kate, Caitlin Clark's five for 10 from the free throw line. So don't judge her on that, okay? She's improved. She's gotten a lot better, but you can see she's stronger. She's more explosive even than she was last year. Addie, I thought she ran the floor beautifully. Uh, again, 14 rebounds. I mean, you know, it, it, you, you want to do those comparisons. She's a better rebounder. Right now, we have a better five rebounder than we did last year. Is Kate still recovering from an illness? Kate, yeah, she's been under the weather for a little bit, and so she has not practiced much in the two weeks, in the last two weeks. Yesterday was her first half a day of practice. What was it like for you from, you know, did you sleep much last night? Did you, you know, did you wake up excited or nervous? And then, and then coming down, and you see the hawk walk. Everybody lined up on the side when you walked in the stadium. What's, what was those pregame moments like? Yeah, well, last night, my, one of my best friend's son got married, and so I was at the wedding, and that was probably the best thing that could have happened because it completely took my mind off of today in this game. But when we drove up for the Hawk Walk, it was, I mean, it reminded you of the Final Four. You know, it really did. It kind of brought those memories back where, you know, the Hawk fans are there. Our band was there. Um, that's when I, you know, I got my first uh, of many emotional m minutes today was at the Hawk Walk. Lisa, so coming out... Um as always with Jan Jensen, kind of a random question, but what does she mean to you and to this program? Well, Jan's been a part of everything for what the last, I don't know, 30 years. We can just kind of lose track right now, but Jan and Jenny Fitzgerald both. I mean, they're both with me at Drake for eight years. Um, you know, I asked them to come over here with me and Jan could have stayed there and been the head coach at Drake University, but they both came over. We had a dream then. We wanted to go to a final four. We wanted to fill Carver. We did not talk about Kinnick at all um, until last April. How much was the weather a concern the last couple of days in the rain? And... You know, people started looking at the weather like 30 days ago, and I never did. I just didn't want to even look at it. Um, but, um, yeah, this week when it started to rain really hard, but it kept saying it was going to stop for Sunday. It was going to stop for Sunday. Again, our facilities crew, they were amazing. I mean, how hard they worked yesterday to set this place up. That's, that's indescribable, really, how, how hard they had to work to make this happen and how thankful we are that people embrace this so much. All right, thanks, guys. I know you want to hear from this one, so. <laughs>